Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Cohen and today I'm going to be guiding you through a restorative yoga practice. So throughout the next hour, I will encourage you to have two yoga blocks, two blankets, and these can just be blankets from home, they don't necessarily have to be yoga blankets, and then a bolster or a pillow. We'll be using all of these props in our different postures today. So with that, we'll begin in reclined bound angle or Supta Baddha Konasana. You'll take your bolster or your pillow, put that long ways behind you, and then grab for your blanket. You want to fold it in half so that way you find more of this rectangular shape and then you'll put that just at the back edge of the bolster. Next, you'll grab your two blocks. Take a seat just in front of the bolster, not sitting on it, but just on the ground in front of it. And then bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees open wide. And then the blocks, whether it's at first height or second height, just let them wedge right underneath the outer knees and outer thighs. And then if you like with the second blanket, I would encourage you to place that either over your feet, just fold it up for some added weight and warmth, or over top of your body. Just a quick note that throughout this class, we do hold the postures is about five to seven minutes. So that's why we're using all of the props, just to support the body and this way the body and the mind can fully release and relax. So as you begin to recline back, adjust so your blanket completely pads the neck and the head. Lift up through your sitting bones and lengthen your tailbone down towards the heels. Shrug your shoulders down your back and then bring the elbows, forearms, and the backs of your hands to take rest on the ground. And allow your eyes to close without squeeze or strain. If anything in your power feels distracting, watches or jewelry, your ties around your wrists, or even glasses on your face. Just take those few extra moments to set those things to either right or left side of your space. And then finally, allowing the body to begin to settle. process of settling into stillness. And so often throughout our day-to-day -day lives, we walk around guarded, really tight, stressed in the body. Right here, right now, I invite you to move through a series of three cleansing exhales. Take your time as you breathe in. Open mouth, breathe out. And we'll take two more just like that. Take a deep breath into the belly. Open mouth, let it go. And last one together, breathe in, feel belly ribs and chest expand. Open mouth, let the breath go. And continue to breathe in a way that is smooth, intentionally deep into the belly, wide into your rib cage. There's no need to constrict your throat. There's no need to contract the abdomen. Simply allow a free flowing breath from your nostrils down to your navel and your navel back up to your nostrils. Building on the awareness of your breath rhythm, 
take a scan through the body, seeking out any lingering tensions or resistance or muscles. And let's begin today at the soles of your feet. Without changing any one thing, simply bring your awareness into the soles of your feet. You slowly shift upward into your calves. And again, without changing the shape of your legs, simply feel into your calves. Work the awareness upward into your knees. Feel the deep bend at your knees. And like an elevator, you work upward into the next body part. Begin to feel into your thighs, quadriceps and your hamstrings, both the inner leg line and the outer leg line. You feel into the spaciousness at your supported open hips. A little more familiar, feel into your abdomen, the way it rises and falls with your intentional breathing. feel into the support of the bolster or pillow at the curved low back. Feel your back ribs. Feel your side body. As we work upward again, feel into your heart. Physically, the center of the chest, but energetically feel into your heart. And as you feel into your heart, I invite you to soften your shoulders down your back. Release any lingering tension in the arms, hands, and your fingers. Soft through ten fingers as you feel into the natural curve. And as you maintain the breath in your belly, return to your midline as you feel into your neck and your throat. Allow your jaw to unclench, your eyes to soften as if they could melt into their sockets. And then finally, feel into the crown of your head, the very top of your skull. Full body awareness from the crown of your head to the palms of your hands to the soles of your feet. From the soles of your feet to the palms of your hands, feel into the crown of your head. crown of your head to the palms of your hands, soles of your feet. And still breathing in a way as you feel full body awareness. Full body awareness. 
full body awareness. And now to complete this union of our opening meditation, I invite you to establish your sankalpa, your intention for today's restorative practice. Your sankalpa is a deep-rooted truth that you will find in your heart. Your reason for showing up today, your reason for showing up to the practice. Time and time again. And there is absolutely no rush, but once you land on your intention, you begin to infuse it with your breath. So that when you breathe in, you deliver it to your tissues, your cells, your skin, muscles, and bones. And when you breathe out, you share this gift of awareness, this gift of a deep rooted intention from your open, willing heart. Mindful breath. Relaxed body. Focused mind. So that with every breath, every movement you take today, it is rooted into your intention, a deep seated truth from your heart. And to send the most gentle signal through your body and your brain that you will be moving. Let's cleanse the exhale together. Take a deep breath in. Open mouth, let it go. And if you'd like more time in stillness, please stay as you are. If you are ready to move on into child pose, begin to move through your fingers, move through your feet. So let the weight of your head fall heavy to the right and to the left. And take your hands to the outer thighs, outer hips, and help close off the legs. And extend both legs long in front of you and reach your arms long overhead. Lengthen your limbs and your spine and your breath without straining anything. Just moving in a way that feels good. And relax the arms at your sides, bend into your knees. Roll over to your side body, finding fetal pose. Just be careful of blocks or other props that might be close to you. And you can use either your upper arm or a blanket to just pad to the side of your face. Allow the eyes to close and explore landing your breath into your side bodies and your side ribs. Without the extra effort held in your jaw, your shoulders, When you maintain the breath in your abdomen, extend your top leg long to the small edge of your space, and then press your top hand into the ground, begin to lift through the torso. And then once you find yourself upright, we'll work into child pose. So you can keep the bolster exactly where it is, remove the blanket, and then just take the knees wide to frame the bolster. Your big toes are touching without overlapping. If you know that your back is a little bit tighter or hips are a little bit tighter, I invite you to use your two blocks. Lift the bolster up. First block is at lowest height. Second block, about six to eight inches away from that, and then it's at second height. And you simply drape the bolster over top. 
Now, as mentioned, we will hold our poses about five to seven minutes. So on sensation scale, less is more. There's no weakness in using more props in this practice. One more thing before we settle in. If you like the added weight and warmth, you can use a blanket, one over the feet. Second one, you unfold it to cape it around your back. Added weight and warmth in these poses just helps you to relax. It's very calming for the nervous system. So begin to forward fold. Allow the abdomen, the ribs, and the chest to all rest. And then either side of your face down to the bolster. Now I'll circle back when we're about three minutes in. And at that three minute marker, I will tell you to lift your head and look to the opposite side of your space. Until then, allow the shoulders to release and your belly to breathe. And if you find that it helps to gather your attention in this present moment experience, let's cleanse the exhalation together again. Take a deep inhale. Open mouth, let it go. Allow the mouth to close as you cycle the breath, nostrils to navel, navel to nostrils. And as we move forward through this practice, I am going to leave you with a little more time in silence. That way you can enjoy the time in reflection and contemplation. That way you can truly appreciate this time spent in relaxation. To be sure that your transitions are just as restorative, just as gentle as the postures held themselves, bring a slow lift into your head and bring the opposite side of your face down to rest without harming your breath, without jarring your body in any which way. Settle back into stillness. 
Enjoy the second half of child. to reconnect to your present moment. Stay as you are, simply take a breath in, a little more generous with your inhale, and let a breath out, exhale. And if you're perfectly content in child pose, please stay as you are for as long or as little as you'd like. If you're ready to move on, again, press into the hands, begin to lift up to the torso, neck, and head. Now with our next posture, I am going to give two options, just depending on what you have accessible. Based on our props, option one, it's a supported version of boat pose. So we'll keep the bolster on an angle, but we'll want to up it even more. So the block that's closest to you, go to second height. Block a little bit further away, you're going to up to third height. And then do the same thing, just angle your bolster right over top. You're going to have one blanket behind you folded in that nice rectangle that will pad your neck and your head. And then have the second blanket just nearby at arm's length, that way it's easy to grab. Let your feet frame the bolster. And then scoot your butt down. Again, you're not sitting on the bolster, just right in front of it. And then lie all the way down onto your back. What you'll find when you recline is your butt pulls away, but scoot your butt up right against the bolster. And then just extend your legs long. So this is a nice expression to neutralize the spine after we bend the back and forward fold it. And with that second blanket, place it over the hips or unfold it in any which way that you choose. So this is option one right here. Now option two, depending on the space in your home, I'm going to offer up legs up the wall. With legs up the wall, I invite you to bring a blanket, just so you have some padding under the neck and head. Put that in a folded place, easy to grab. And you're going to scoot your hips right up against the wall. So instead of reclining down first, just scoot your hips. You're going to lift up a butt cheek and kind of this tuck and roll. Lie down on your side and then go all the way up, legs to the wall. The hamstrings are a little bit tighter. You don't have to be right up against to give yourself more space. Relax through the feet, 
smooth out the blanket so it's comfortable and slide your shoulders down. Whether it's half boat pose or legs up the wall, choose the hands, whether it's palms on the belly, arms out to the sides, or even diamond shape the arms overhead to open up through the shoulders and the chest. If you find it helpful to gather your attention and present moment experience, take a big breath in and open mouth, let it go. And for these next few minutes, you mind your breath. Allow your breath work to support the posture as the sensation slowly unfolds. Every time you find that your mind has wandered off, reflecting on the past or curious about the future, without reacting or judgment, you simply bring your focus, your attention back to the breath. Choose the present moment, time and time again.
together. Let's take a big breath in. And let all of your breath out. Whether it's legs up the wall or your half boat pose, bend your knees slowly and then hug them all the way up to the chest. Bring your hands to the shins or the knees and just slowly sway the body. Cradle to the right and to the left. Without jarring in the transition, slowly roll to a fetal pose. Remember, use a blanket or your upper arm to pad the side of your face. And just take a few rounds of breath into whichever side body you have grounded your waist and your side ribs, all the way into the upper back and shoulders. There's no guarding in the abdomen as you use the hands and arms to make your way back up. Now if you moved into legs up the wall, come back to your yoga mat. Our next posture that we'll do today is a supported fish pose. So with supported fish, we just have a different setup for our two blocks. The first block, you're going to put long and at first setting. This is going to support your spine and support your shoulder blades. Second block will also be at first setting, and this will support your skull. So you'll notice it looks like a capital T. Option two is just higher height, so a more intense back bend, a bigger opening on the chest and collarbones. The first block, you would then up that height to second setting, and then it becomes more centralized along your spine. There's a greater lift at the space between the shoulder blades, so then your heart lifts higher. Not that either is better or worse, just know that you have two options. And with your bolster, place that width-wise out in front of you. This is going to support a bend in your knees. With our two blankets, we're going to encourage you to use them to pad the arms. It's subtle, but it's really lovely on your body. So I kind of just angle those off in more of a rectangle, blankets folded in half. Take a seat on your mat, drape the legs over the bolster, and then just take your time as you recline. You'll find that first block it's about low or middle back. It really just depends on how tall you are and how long your torso is. The shoulder blades will squeeze in and you'll find as the head drops back, the chin is above your forehead. So you want that intentional lift of the chin and there's some shortening, no crunching, no dumping in the back of the neck, but a shorter line in the neck. Then slide your blankets in and up let them pad through the elbows, forearms, and the backs of your hands. Bring length again into both legs. And press into your legs to lift your hips. Lengthen your tailbone down towards the heels. As you bring your butt back down, let your eyes close. And if you find it helpful, a cleansing exhale. Take a big breath in. Open mouth, let it go. Closure of the mouth. Breathe in through your nose. And breathe out through your nose. When your lungs are elevated, you may find, there's no expectation, but you may find that you are more inclined to use a greater capacity of your lungs. So if possible, can your breath not only become fuller, but can your breath become longer and slower? as often as your attention divides, 
wanders off onto anything outside of the present moment, simply begin again. Come back to the breath, nostrils to navel. Feel the breath, navel to nostrils. As we're becoming more familiar with the sensation, is there anywhere in your body that you can soften further? Sense the shoulders, feel into the weight of the arms and the legs. With every exhale, relaxation becomes deeper.
And stay as you are, but bring your awareness back to your breathing. Take a breath in, slowly fill up your lungs. And let a breath out, empty your lungs. And for the last few moments that we're in supported fish, I'll ask you to lift up to the hands and arms and grab the block under your head. You're going to lift it up to the second height. And with that second setting, tuck the chin below the forehead just to bring some length into the back of the neck. Release the hands and arms back down and we just take a few rounds of breath. to completely release. Please take your time as you bend into your knees. Feel your feet and the texture of your bolster. And then roll all the way over to fetal pose. Just moving slow, you'll come off of the height of those two blocks, blanket or upper arm, to pad the side of your head. And just close the eyes, take a few rounds of breath. If it feels appropriate, lift your knees a little higher to the chest and tuck the chin down low into the throat. Five. And you kind of feel that buzz of prana, of life force in your back after rolling off the blocks for four. Three. Two. And one. Slowly transition upright, use the hands and strong arms. Now our final series before Shavasana today is a supine twist. So for this, let's move the blocks off of your space entirely. Grab one of your blankets, fold that up as that will pad your neck and your head. And then your bolster, I'll ask that you bring it over long ways to the left side of your space. So I have a blanket behind me, bolster on my left, and it's long ways. And then all you have to do is lie down on your back. Once you're lying down, adjust so the blanket finds your neck and your head with the shoulders. They completely rest on the ground. We meet in half wind relieving pose. Hug your right knee up to the chest and let your left leg go long. So take a breath in, squeeze the right leg. With your exhale, spinal twist. Guide your right leg all the way over to the left. You want the bolster to support your knee, your inner calf, and the inside of your right foot. You may have to slide the bolster down or lift it up. Scoot your left hip underneath your right. Option one, interlace your fingers and let your palms rest on your right ribs. If you're like me and the right elbow is kind of just floating in space, grab that block and rest it under your right tricep. So just bring the ground closer to you and that way it feels restorative. Option two with the upper body. Open your arms in a nice big capital T. But again, if the right arm doesn't rest, take the block underneath again, the right tricep, right elbow, or your right forearm. For me personally, I like it underneath the forearm and the back of my right hand if I'm using the block that day. Otherwise, backs of both hands easily, effortlessly rest and just flop out. Last choice that you have to make is regarding the gaze and the neck. Neutral, you look up to the ceiling. If it is both safe and appropriate, look all the way over to the open right hand. If that doesn't feel restorative in your body, Change the gaze and look upward towards the ceiling. Sometimes when we twist, there's a tendency to hold tension in the lower half, specifically your glutes. So just check in if there's tightness or resistance of those areas soften. And I'll throw our timer on for a total of five minutes. 
We dedicate that duration to being and breathing in the pose. If it helps to collect your attention in present moment, let's cleanse the exhale. Take a big breath in. Open mouth release. Closure of your mouth, breathe in through your nose. And breathe out through your nose. as you are, as you want your breath to support your transition. Take a big breath into the belly and ribs. And on your exhale, squeeze at your navel, slowly unwind. And you can press your right foot into the ground, scoot your hips back in line with your shoulders. We meet in what's called constructive rest. Bring your feet to the mat and toe heel them nice and wide and allow the inner knees to knock against one another. And we take constructive rest in between sides to allow the sacrum to settle and essentially the back body reorganizes itself in this neutral spine position. Just close the eyes and let your body breathe as I count you down for five. Four, three, two, and one. Toe heel your feet back to hips width distance. 
and we'll take the bolster that was over on the left and switch it all the way over to the right. Make sure it's long ways and right next to you. Meeting in half wind relieving pose. Now the right leg goes long. Hug left knee up to your chest. Relax your shoulders down and take a big breath in. Exhale, spinal twist. Stack the hips as you guide your left leg over to the right. You'll notice that my left foot is kind of hanging off the bolster. So I'm going to slide it down as you want the inner knee, calf, and your left foot completely on height or your level. Interlace the fingers and let them rest on your left ribs. You might grab for the block and prop up your left tricep and elbow. If the chest feels a little more open, option to extend the arms into that big capital T. And then the final choice is either with the neck and the gaze look upward or begin to look over to the left at your open left palm. Take the time to scan from your hips all the way down to your feet. Notice if there's extra tension. And to support the process of settling, one more cleansing, exhale, take a big breath in. Open mouth, let it go. As we dedicate the next five minutes, to being here and simply breathing. to strengthen your skill of patience. Inhale, fill up your belly, ribs and chest. Exhale, engage at the navel and slowly unwind. Press the sole of your left foot into your mat and sweep your hips in line with shoulders. And come back to constructive rest. Bend knees, angle toes in, and draw the inner knees to touch. Bring palms to rest. 
just gently on the abdomen. Slide your shoulders down the back. Eyes closed and just take stock. Feel into your body for five. Let the back body soften, four. Belly, breathe at three. Two. And one. Toe heel your feet back to hip width distance and hug the knees gently up towards the chest. You can hold still or do a little sway to the right and to the left. And last but certainly not least, we'll set up for supported Shavasana. And in order to support your final rest, you'll keep the blanket under your neck and your head and slide your bolster out in front of you widthwise. This will support your knees. And then last with that second blanket, unfold it and you'll place it all the way over your body. Begin by draping the legs. When your heels ground, though this is subtle, it is important when the heels ground about hips width distance, just let your feet flop out in a heavy external rotation. Unfold your blanket. And to the best of your ability, just let it cover through the feet all the way up to the chest. Begin to recline. Adjust so the second blanket comfortably pads and cushions the neck and the head. Traditionally, the arms, they flap out in an inverted V from the shoulders down to the fingers. And that open quality in your hands, it's a symbol of absorption, this willingness to receive your practice. And then one last time, let's cleanse the exhale. Take a big breath in. Open mouth. Now moving forward, you no longer have to control or shape your breath in any which way. Instead, for these last few minutes of class, just let your breath become soft. Feel your breath become easy. From the ease in your breath, Let your body become so still. And as comfortable as you possibly can be right here, right now. Easy breath, soft body. So that ultimately your mind can become so quiet. you can experience peace in your present moment. Soft breath, still body, quiet mind. So that you can experience peace in the present moment. With that, may you enjoy and appreciate this precious time in your final rest.
now by all means. If your time allows an extended shavasana, please stay as you are and simply listen. So those of you that are ready to be guided out without blindly reacting simply because I've begun talking, rather strengthen your patience as you bring change into your breath. Whether it's a subtle change or a grand fluctuation, just feel your breath. Begin to move through the feet, through the fingers, and your face. In a way that will feel most excellent, take a full body stretch. Lengthen your limbs and your spine and your breath. If you have the blanket over top, set it off to the side as you hug your knees up to the chest. One last time for today's practice, roll over to fetal pose. Close the eyes and just pause to feel the effects of your practice. For these last few moments, you stay inward with a soft gaze, if not eyes closed as you transition upright to a comfortable seat. Now, if comfort entails height, sit upright on the bottom edge of your bolster or your block. And root down into the sitting bones. You feel stable and secure. So then open up the heart and lengthen your spine. Collect your hands at your heart and Anjali Mudra. Close the eyes. And you feel into the spaciousness that you've created in your physical body, as well as the spaciousness in your heart and your mind. And together we flood that spaciousness with the benevolent quality of metta, of loving kindness. So I invite you to softly bow your chin to your chest as we journey through this prayer. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings know peace. May all beings find their freedom. May all beings move through the world with ease. And my hope for you is that your practice is continuous, your heart so steady and of benefit to all beings. In support of yourself and those in this Sangha, this community, take a big breath in. Open mouth, share your gift. With so much love and gratitude to you, we close this practice with a collective bow. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. It was truly my pleasure to guide you through this restorative yoga practice, and I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you again for being here, and I will see you soon.